Jai Hind and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achins. With the war in Ukraine, all eyes are towards the western part of the world or Eastern Europe, if I may put it that way. A lot much about the India-China tensions have been forgotten. It's either Pakistan, which is in turmoil, or the Ukraine war, which is taking making headlines within the international news within India. To discuss our northern neighbor, which we've got, which we've had tensions with for close to two years now, I have with me Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, a former DGMO, who's going to throw some light on the factor how the relations are today, how they have changed over time, and what does he see in the future. Sir, thank you so much for uh, you know joining me for this discussion, where I'd like to refocus my attention towards China. Uh, thank you, Adi. Jack, for your viewers. A lot of good to be on your show. Honored indeed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, let's begin with the core commander's talk. There have been 15 rounds of discussion. Uh, you know, we've had some uh, disengagement on Pingong, so a little bit on Hot Springs and Gogra area. Not very, very fully done. Uh, both the countries seem a little short of actually announcing the disengagement in those areas. And no other movement post that. Tensions are the same. Uh, we are pretty much in another summer today. Uh, another three, four, five months. Again, the same situation of sticking on with winter. So this is the probably the opportunity that India and China have to come to a resolution if there is any. Why do you think there is a holdup, sir? Yeah, the, that that's a key question. What is why there is a holdup? Uh, I, I think we're we are two years down the line since China's forward deployment along the kind of actual control in the Western sector, at least in the car. and uh, we don't seem to have a resolution as yet which is acceptable to the two sides, that's both India and China. And there have been talks at the political level, there have been talks at the diplomatic level, there have been ongoing rounds of talks at the military level, 15 rounds of talks, and uh, things don't seem to be moving forward. They, they were they moved forward in during the long, so there was uh, something which was uh, definitely uh, a give and take after we hit the last ditch for the big uh, But thereafter, nothing seems to be moving forward. And I, I feel this is not good for India. A status quo uh, deployment has of May, June 2020 is not good for it uh, because we are looking at a status quo ante, which is as of April 2020. That is uh, what we are seeking. And uh, we're seeking it through talks, we're seeking through a revival of peace and tranquility, which has prevailed along the line of actual control. Uh, but China doesn't seem to be uh, responding the way we thought they would respond again. You know, there were 15 on the talks, and these, each of the talks carries on about 10 to 12, 15 hours. And uh, we had the 12th round of talks, which was, I think, uh, very, which was not a good, uh, most of the talks were very cordial and very formal. But the 12th round of talks uh, was not good. Uh, China showed a very condescending uh, attitude. And uh, that was, uh, you know, when they, when they talk about it, if I quote, uh, the China said, instead of misjudging the situation, the Indian side should cherish the hard, hard one situation in China India borders. Okay. So they, they're saying that we should cherish that. So I, I think this is something which, uh, uh, correction, this is 30 round of talks in October 2021 are talking about right now. And uh, thereafter, the 14th and 15th round, the tone, tone of the Chinese uh, press statements thereafter uh, has been conciliatory, but there, nothing seems to be happening. So what what what, what do I see? I think I, I think a stalemate. A stalemate is not good for India. It's not good for China either. You know, uh, there's a whole Chinese saying, you know, uh, heading south, driving north. That means, you know, they had intended something, but... The end result is something else. So for China, also the end result is not good. For India, definitely the end result is not good right now, till now. It's not the end as yet. So what we are looking at is a, a continuation of talks right now. Uh, so we have uh, had the diplomatic visits, we had military talks. Uh, but the last talks was nearly two months uh, away, not 12th of March, but a half months now. And uh, that is not a very good sign. We should keep talking at least every month. Uh, every month. So that is happening by the end. I know, sir, that I think the, the Ukraine war which is happening in Europe has kind of held the entire process over here because a lot of the focus of diplomacy and everything is going there. But on the backdrop of this particular war, the Chinese foreign minister landed up in India. It was sort of an unannounced visit. It wasn't propagated uh, the way other visits are. Uh, it was till the last moment we were not sure whether he's coming or not. And uh, there was no news put out. There was nothing. This, what did they, you know, they wanted to get, they, one thing that I read that they wanted to get onto the same page as us because both of India and China saw the Ukraine situation in a similar way. Uh, 
this particular aspect by the way india responded to it and uh, minister jay shankar also gave a press briefing after that became a little bit of a hit back towards uh, china sir how do you see that particular move of the chinese trying to suddenly get a breakthrough in the middle of nowhere sir i think that visit was very important uh, very important in the sense that firstly uh, the foreign minister of india visited pakistan and then went to afghanistan and then to india and uh, india india or he landed a civil airfield you know the civil civil uh, portion of the airfield and he did not get to meet the prime minister he only got to meet the external affairs minister and the uh, raksha mantri uh, and then it's a matter of production and then essay and they had talks but the has i think uh, during my uh, uh, what i read about the budget was that his interest was two fold one was to get india on the same page Uh, to look at Russia, the way China looks at Russia, and look at the war on in their perspective, not in the West's perspective. And second, and more important, was to ensure the visit of Prime Minister Modi during the BRICS summit in person, which, which Beijing is holding. Right. So that is very important. The face is very important to the Chinese, you know? and it's a matter of face. Now, BRICS, India is a very it's a primary part of the uh, of the BRICS, uh, particularly. And uh, their aim would be to get the Prime Minister to come to Beijing. big summit and that i think was the key issue so that gives us certain leverages uh, over uh, china uh, and they want to they want to you know delink the situation along the line of actual control and india china relations they think the line of actual control is stabilized as far well, as well they are concerned that is what the signal which are coming out and they can continue with the india china relations without what's you know just ignoring what's happening over there the indians concerns the indian sensitivities the indian territorial integrity as we talk about and they think that we should move ahead as business we should not that can't happen they cannot have business we will with china uh, given the situation along the line of action and india has been categorical saying this way but the nsa or the external affairs minister categorically has said so that you cannot deal with the two they have they have to move together you have to the our concerns have to be addressed we have to go to status quo ante and then take the relationship as a whole forward there after now we cannot uh, you know uh, segregate the two that we, you know whatever we do in the north is uh, on the border gathering and we should continue the you know expanding our ties expanding our relations so this is not gonna, but the but the key question i, I think there's something which uh, china does and this is the second time it's done it uh, third time even in 62 you know it was hindi chinese by the all along and then 62 happened and if you look at 2020 uh, it was again the strategic relationship was going on we had the formal visits uh, of prime minister modi to wuhan and uh, president xi jinping to mahabali forum And uh, the, you know the, the, the relationship of growing in India China very good. And suddenly, you know, what China does is monk kiosks, seeks opportunity to come to the Middle East and other for deployment. So I think the, the trust which was building up over the years, uh, which are the generation, which I would say your generation, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not saying that, who who had not seen 62, who had forgotten 62, who were willing to forgive China for 62, will never forgive China for Galwa 650 million youth. That's what we are talking about. So China should look at the you know China doesn't understand India. We say Indians are Indians, but we don't see the China challenge. We don't understand China. Fine, but even China doesn't understand India. And China, I think, has gone wrong out there. And China, India, in their own way, have uh, had an excellent response. But the continuing status quo, continuing you know uh, deployment, is not good for India because if so facto, uh, Chinese have moved the line of action. Okay. We can also look at China having opened up too many fronts. A lot of people, are, a lot of us talk about India having two, two, uh, two fronts or two and a half fronts. But look at China; it's got five to six fronts. India is only one of them. South China Sea, East Sea, Korea, Taiwan, and uh, uh, is China looking at the Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, and the reaction or the you know actions by uh, the Western world uh, and learning lessons for Taiwan? Because Taiwan is China's key concern. The one one China uh, theory. So I, I feel the China will look at very closely and see how far can Russia get away, and see if China can also get away with Taiwan in a similar fashion. Uh, it's a very scary scenario, but it's a possible scenario. And China, like we look at Ukraine, what what India can learn from Ukraine war. I'm sure China is looking at the larger picture. If can Russia get away with Ukraine, China can get away with Taiwan also. So, how would you describe the situation today? Is it a battle of wits, attrition, uh, a battle of will? 
how would you look at that and with the politics within china today with the whole virus and the re-election of uh, xi jinping re-elections reappointment however you may want to put it because i've been tagged once before uh, by someone who said it's not re-election it's re in statement of xi jinping if i may use that word correctly uh, how do you analyze the entire situation on the border sir what is the current how would you term it yeah you know, we we uh, we cannot deal in the internal and external situations right so uh, we find uh, that xi jinping is a very strong leader there is no, there's no doubt about your strong leader and so is prime minister modi so the two strong leaders and xi jinping is uh, definitely been nominated uh, you know he's been elected as a representative again, which paves the way for the third term for a third term right so uh, when he seeks a third term he will be very careful not to disturb the internal dynamics uh, of china and again the face is very important so i don't think xi jinping will back out back, uh, back out in a hurry on the ic and make any concessions but at the same time he has to also pacify his uh, people because there is social conflict within the chinese people and the communist party it's not the chinese people in the nation it's the chinese people in the communist party of china right and that social conflict has to maintain and covid is not what the reports coming out are that covid is back in china this time in a big way and there there are you know, social media is all open about it the cages the uh, isolation camps which are there the hospitals are doing it with boxes so the uh, people buy food uh, today we said the beijing is going crazy buying going for food so things are not looking very good internally and internal uh, 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 turmoil in china is not good for him the china is a big country and that will make you know uh, an authoritarian regime like xi jinping take decisions uh, do actions uh, which the neighborhood has to watch for 27 years china got 27 years and uh, uh, all of them are uh, actually not uh, very friendly with china they got border uh, issues and other disputes with almost every one they went to japan malaysia indonesia uh, you, know, you name it it's all there so what i what i what i think is that we'll have to be very careful in what uh, we are doing our stance along the line of actual control around the china border has to be very steady very sturdy and uh, now the summers are here we, we are we are strong out there and we have to make sure that our strength remains we should not be part of our ever and we should also build capabilities uh, where uh, we address china's vulnerability strategic vulnerability and strategic concerns that is in the indian ocean region uh, that's basically in the straits the seven straits so, so uh, we'll have to look at the whole thing and like i say we should look at china with a 3d strategy the 3d strategy being i wonder if i have spoken on your platform on this uh, the 3d strategy being defend the lac strongly dominate the seas the ocean that is any ocean region and third is deter china's aggressive behavior binding to balance with you know like minded nations with where we have convergence of interests uh, like pod and other there other multilateral so i, I think this uh, we have to continue with it we cannot you know our focus cannot be um, uh, taken away from this ukraine fine russia what's happening is fine other things sri lanka is there pakistan is there the neighborhood is there there is the issue but our main focus has to be china china and china because that is where the our, our strategy concerns lie right now until unless china gets back to status quo ante we cannot be on we cannot get our part of what's over either the political diplomatic or the military absolutely sir you mentioned rush uh, sri lanka you mentioned pakistan uh, nepal all three of them have big footprints of china so we have to deal with china there as well so you, your your focus towards china is actually much required as you're saying uh so moving on to russia one, you know india and russia have very very deep ties but uh, looking at the economic situation and the predictions that are being made of course the fog of war kind of takes you away from the reality of the picture but one kind of tends to believe financially the russians would be dependent on the chinese for a little bit to stabilize for a, for some sorts uh how do you think india russia relationships and india china relationships will get changed due to the geopolitics playing out in eastern ukraine sir uh, eastern europe yeah uh, uh, i think that that's the another challenge we have right now we have a very fine balance and this balance is based both on balance of interest and balance of power uh, so the, the two things which will drive our uh, policies and uh, i must say the uh, government of india the policies are steadily well we have a very fine balance 
uh, we have taken a, a, a next layer stance where we have balanced our interests. Our interests are first and foremost. Uh, see, today everyone's talking about Ukraine, Russia, invasion, everything. But where was the world when uh, China did what it did to India in 2020? Where, where were they? Uh, where, where was this, you know, great uh, humanitarian resource when we had then when we had to you know take care of 10 million refugees in Bangladesh? I, I, I ask this question for everyone. It, it, it's very okay to, to today come and sovereignize and tell India what India should do. Well, today India is not what India should do. India is a, a big problem today. We are, we are responsible for We are responsible for we, 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 we know what exactly we, we have to do. And we have leverages and linkages the world over. We've done well. And today you come and summarize us. We had the deputy NSA of the US coming summarizing us. I, I don't I don't see when we, we this is not India which is summarized. Please, please understand that. And we have to look after our interests. Where were you when you know let's not look on a moral equation? Moral equations are one-sided. This you had moral, where were the moral equations? Where where were the moral standing? Uh, during the uh, Bangladesh war, or during some only other uh, uh, problem which you created. So I, I do feel that we should look at Ukraine definitely because we, we have to. And, uh, uh, but we also have to look at our interests, and that is where I think uh, the future will lie uh, in the immediate to near term. Uh, and Russian is Russia is important to us. So is US important to us. Both are strategic partners. So is the European Union important to us? And we have, you know, uh, we cannot put it in a, you know, in, in the same watertight compartment. So we are dealing with Russia, Russia, India, Russia. We have to look at European Union as European Union. Uh, we have to look at the US as the US, the West as the West, and China as China. And Pakistan and Pakistan also, and that's what exactly we are doing. That is why we had at the same time, uh, in a gap of a couple of days, uh, we had the, uh, you know, foreign minister of the European Union. Uh, in, in uh, Delhi, we had the deputy NSA president in Delhi, and we had the Russian foreign minister president in Delhi. And as of yesterday, we also had the president of the European Union in Delhi. So, uh, India is the center today. We must come to India to seek India's support in resolving issues. Why? Because they trust India. We are most trusted. We have our, uh, uh, you know, the trust we have created because we are right and we are a big part. Centrality of India, sir. I think that is coming out pretty strongly, and you've also brought it out pretty well, sir. This your your description of European uh, reactions to what happened in uh, India reminds me of what uh, Minister Jay Shankar mentioned on in Raisina. He said, you know, when there was a rules-based order issue within Asia, you told us to do more trade with China. At least we're not telling you to do more trade with Russia. So please keep your sermons to yourself, and that's something that you've also brought out very clearly. Uh, this feeling is being echoed not just within the populace, but as well as the establishment in India as well, sir. Sir, coming to the United States, uh, you know the recent two plus two dialogues plus the national, uh, the South uh, is the Indo-Pacific policy that the U.S. had taken out uh, calls India a net security provider for the Indo-Pacific. Um, that puts us pretty much in the driving seat of the Quad. And one of the things that I wanted to ask you is. Uh, you know, how feasible is something like that uh, for India to do going into the future, currently and going into the future? And of course, what are the effects that we will see with regards our relation with China when we expand our role into the net security provider as per se, sir? Yeah, I think we, we, we uh, as a region, we have to go together and uh, we have to develop together. You know, development is a big process. Uh, most of the nations in the region we want an independence uh, at the same time. And now we have a democracy. South Asia is, uh, uh, we want to respect the democracy of South Asia, irrespective of what people may say. And uh, when we grow together, development is together. And that's what the Prime Minister said in Sagar, security will fall in the region. And uh, we have had, uh, if you look at India, and you know, we, we helped out Sri Lanka during the uh, 1987 to 1989. And we want one nation didn't stay there. When we were not wanted, we came back. Similarly, Maldives, and I was there for the Maldives operation. We went in there, we were there exactly from 3rd of November to 17th of November, and then we came out. Except for a you know, little uh, sort of attachment which we left behind at the request of the government of Maldives. So we, uh, then we, we had helped Bangladesh during the uh, disaster management, and we were in Nepal during the disaster management. 
So it's not that, you know, we, we have been given and reduced tsunami, we, we, we went out and helped everybody. So when you talk about net security provider, it is not only in the national economy, in the, in the security challenges with the convention, but also non traditional security challenges. And during the COVID in 2020, we went out and reached out to the world by giving medicines. So uh, uh, that is where I think we have to look at uh, India and when you talk about the Indo-Pacific, you know, again, uh, India has laid down the vision uh, of, you know, what is it, the five S's, the Saman, uh, we, we are the CEO, the Shanti, the Samsamriddhi, uh, and one more, which is, uh, you know, the, the dialogue. So we have the five S's. So we, we have to grow the Indo-Pacific. India is important in the Indo-Pacific. The pivot is, lies with India. So in the, when you talk about Indo-Pacific growth, it is India, it is Japan, USA, it is Australia, and we should look at Indo Pacific of the port plus plus plus. You know, France is there, it sounds like there. And uh, China, it, it should not be an anti China, uh, it's, it's perceived as anti China only. No, it should not be anti China only. Right? Uh, there's more to, more to China than the world. So everything cannot be China centric, China focused, anti China focused. No. We, we should look at, you know, as a region, as a peaceful region where security is ensured to everyone through. Those nations which can quite secure. And India is one of them. So that is where I, I uh, uh, the vision uh, of the Indo Pacific and India's role in it is very clearly spelled out. And our outreach towards South Asia, Southeast Asia, towards South Asia, to the global, to Indo Pacific, the region, uh, has been spelled out again very well. And we are doing well. And we are trusted because most nations, when they send their military into the region, uh, into you know, in what they call it, operation other than war, they don't come back so well. For Vietnam, 25 years, the U.S. was there. You look at what the U.S. was there in Afghanistan, 22 days. You look at again Iraq, you look at other, other nations. And we were there just for the specific mission. And when we and we went on the invitation of the governments, the, the, the Indo-Sri Lanka accord, and uh, in the Maldives, the president had invited us. That's how we went on. And the moment they said that the job is done, we came back. Without hesitancy, we said, thank you very much, we come back. So that is where I think the trust of the nations uh, are there that India, if it comes to your help, they will not come and do you, they will not come and interfere with you, they will help you out and they go back. And that is where we talk about next security provider. And that is the key issue of trust of nations. I think, uh, you know, more than military power, you were actually flipped it around to the trust and the humanitarian cause of the entire thing. Uh, it reminds me of a saying that, uh, you know, the Mongols used to have that a uh, an army that occupies becomes makes the soldiers into jailers and that's something that uh, you know we can see with the occupation forces in various different places around the world so my last question to you is about uh, you know the future um, this is the past two months that we've noticed even the track two between india and china has come to somewhat of a standstill uh, movement is not there otherwise the track two methodology used to move a little bit there was some movement in this there's not been much meetings. There's not been anything. Uh, is this a Chinese signal of saying this is what it is and this is where we stand? Or is this them dealing within first to get themselves strong? Or what's, what's happening here, sir? I think you're, you're, you're right over there. The, the, the hardened stance uh, from China and from India, India, India stands very categorically. I don't think it's a hardened stance. And uh, so I think there are hardened stance on the China side. And ipso facto in the forward deployment, uh, what they occupy, they occupy. And we, we want to make sure that they go back and that only can happen to increase the cost of China. Hmm. And that's a, that's not an easy proposition. Uh, we may deter China from further aggressiveness, but increase the cost of China is an easy proposition. It's a, it's a, it's a, it takes some time. So till then, till we find the right uh, you know, uh, 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 ways of uh, getting them to the next table, make sure that they see the reason uh, through dialogue. Uh, so we have to hold and we should speak to China from position of uh, China does have to understand that uh, the Indian forces are capable. And uh, if they can come and do power deployment of the so, so can we. And we tried it. The strategic civilian during Kalash, Okubi in Kalash, 29th, 30th August of 2020, they very categorical. You know, Galwan was very, very categorical. With Galwan, uh, the Chinese did suffer a, a number of uh, damages mm -hmm. and casualties. Had not, we not many more Galwans happened. The fact that we did not see any more Galwans, and there we know. Uh, escalation post Galwan is reason to, to believe and to it's a, it's a testimony that Galwan cost for China was very high. There would have been more Galwans. So we we have to make sure that we have uh, our, we keep our uh, this is right. 
and uh, we have our uh, options and we should have our options in all schools. And uh, we try and resolve it through dialogue because dialogue is the answer to big parts of nuclear arms. You know, what, you know, nearly more than one third of the uh, world's population resides out here. That is, uh, so we, we are not talking of you know, small nations versus you know, for other nations. So we'll have to look at uh, China and we'll have to make sure that we go through go through dialogue and how we do it. Because uh, it's a long run process, but the so facto, like I said, um, the Chinese uh, are not going to go back in a hurry. Uh, but China's long-term aim is to resolve the population. Uh, Mao's aim, Mao's philosophy was to including inclusive land borders. And Xi Jinping follows Mao's philosophy. And he's a strong leader. So if they want inclusive land borders, it can only come through negotiations. And negotiations are uh, going to happen. Uh, and uh, China has misunderstood India, misjudged India. Uh, they, they, we could have resolved certain issues, but at present, with the Chinese aggressive behavior along the line of action control, that opportunity seems to have lost. So what we should look at is firstly, re-establish the status quo ante, and then strengthening the peace and tranquility dynamics. I mean, China knows that they cannot go beyond this, and India also doesn't want to go beyond this. So we'll have to look at peace and tranquility along the line of action control, but not at Chinese terms. At an equitable, what we should look at equitable terms, equitable security. That's a very realistic picture, sir, that you put across. And, uh, you know, what? of course, one of the biggest things is still, as I said, till the new year, everybody still had China in the mind because every month, some or the other meeting used to happen. But uh, starting the February 22nd, I think India, China, this thing went totally out of the window, except for the couple of days in the middle when Wang Yi decided to pop into India and try and resolve the issues and probably get India on its side with regards to Russia to create the proverbial India-China-Russia axis that they've been dreaming about for a long time. But that thing didn't work out because, as uh, you mentioned, sir, uh, India has put across very clearly that the line of actual control and the relations cannot be separated. And of course, India has a long way to go in terms of, uh, you know, becoming the power that we dream of. But, you know, the the the... the the way that the things are moving in the world, as again, you mentioned, so the, a lot of centrality of India has just come up. And I think the Chinese are also watching it for them to keep as an adversary to India would not be very beneficial for them as well, as you again mentioned, sir. Thank you so much. As always, sir, it's a very, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting to hear a perspective which is basically very realistic and not uh, meddled with a lot of rhetoric as what we hear in our news and TV and all that stuff. But it's it's always a pleasure, as I said, to talk to you. Till next time, sir, for another subject. Till then, sir, Jai Hind. Jai Hind, Ravi, thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir.